Hey, what is up guys, I'm back with another Dead by Daylight video. Today I'm showing you guys the first part of the no-nonsense guide to looping. In the series, I will get straight to the point, not waste any of your time, while still making it clear and helpful. I will put the timestamps of each section on the screen right now and also in the description. We will be covering the basics of looping, TNL walls, killer shack, filler pellets, and at the end of the video, this is some super fun gameplay of me looping my friend and showing off some of the tips in this video. So definitely stay put for that. Thank you guys for watching and if you guys enjoyed, please like and subscribe. With that all said and done, let's get into the video. Love you guys. There are four basics to looping that if you implement into your game, you will quickly see improvement. The first being tight looping and hugging the wall slash loop. This one is pretty self-explanatory because if you hug the loop as tightly as possible without getting stuck, it will get you from point A to point B the fastest and can even gain you an extra loop or two before having to drop the pallet. The second looping tip is always looking behind you and keeping an eye on the killer and his red light. Doing this makes sure you always know which direction the killer is going so you can respond accordingly. You can see in this clip that I'm always looking around for his red light so if I know if he's doubling back, where he is, and which way he is committing to. The third rule is to play off of what the killer is doing. This is pretty much the same as the last one, but I feel the need to state it. Basically, if you see the killer running at you one way, you run the other way, and if he doubles back, you react accordingly. The fourth and final rule is to not waste or wait at any pallets. Pallets are a limited resource in Dead by Daylight, and you can really screw over a team by wasting pallets or waiting at pallets when you can easily continue looping and get some distance or even a few more loops in. A lot of the time, it's worth taking hit or going down instead of wasting some of the best pallets on the map early in the game. Okay, so we're first starting off with TNL walls. They're called TNL walls because, well, they're shaped like a TNL. Surprise, surprise. This is what TNL walls usually look like, the TNL being the walls and the red rectangles being the windows. The worst way a killer can loop this is by going around the outside of these walls. This allows the survivor to easily fast fall each window three times before blocking and giving them the best chance in survival. You can see here how easy it is for me just to keep looping and fast faulting each window on the TNL wall. Since we showed the best case scenario, now we're going to show the worst. There's still ways you can loop the TNL wall when the killer is doing this, but it becomes very, very unsafe. If the killer decides to loop to the middle, this will trigger what is called a 50-50, usually around the T-wall. The survivor has two choices to either go for the window vault of the T-wall and hope the killer doesn't double back, or fake the window vault and gain distance. As you can see here, the killer is right behind me, forcing a 50-50 of either vaulting the T-wall window or faking the vault. You will see in the scenario, I end up faking the vault and making enough distance to get to the L-wall. If you are able to vault the window without the killer doubling back, you pretty much set yourself up for a fast vault on the L wall. The next loop we are looking at is the killer shack. The killer shack is one of the strongest loops in the game if looped correctly, and by far my favorite. The killer shack has two doors, one having a pallet, and the window is on the same wall as the pallet, so I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'll show a diagram on the screen right now. The most efficient way to loop the killer shack is by entering through the door without the pallet and vaulting the window. It guarantees a fast vault and has many many safe places to stop and see where the killer is committing to. Some of these spots are shown as lime dots on the diagram. I don't know if that made much sense, but I'm going to show you a video showing what I mean. Another thing good killers will often do is show their red light around the corner and then moonwalk to the window to catch you after the vault. To avoid this, you can fake the window vault and then continue looping. The way to predict this mind game by the killer is to be paying attention and also watching how the killer has been looping in the past and with that information, make an educated guess of the best decision. The third and final loop we are covering before we get to the fun gameplay is filler pallets. Filler pallets are just pallets you see all over the map, not in any jungle gym type structure. There are safe pallets and unsafe pallets, and unsafe pallets are the ones we are going to be mostly covering in this segment. So what is the difference between a safe and an unsafe pallet? Safe pallet is a pallet the killer will have to break because it will waste an incredible amount of time if they don't, or it's sometimes impossible to hit the survivor around. An unsafe pallet is one that can be mind-gamed by the killer so it can hit the survivor on it, and so it doesn't need to be broken. 
With unsafe pellets, it's almost absolutely necessary to get a stun on the killer to make more distance to something else you can work with. If you don't get a stun, it will cause this really uncomfortable situation where the survivors are forced to frantically vault the pallet in order to try to not being hit. This isn't the most unsafe pallet ever, but you can see here that I don't get the stun, resulting in me having to vault back and forth. While this is also not the most unsafe pallet, I am able to get the stun and make enough distance to either lose the killer or get to another tile. Most of the time it is still worth looping around these unsafe pallets a few times before dropping the pallet because looping the killer is all about your survival and wasting the killer's time for your team. It is about that time that we switch over to the real gameplay of Looping My Friend. We both had some awesome plays and it's just super entertaining to watch. If you guys made it this far, thank you. Let's get right into the fun.